My, how the time flies. It's another week and another opportunity to come into your home with a message that will be very helpful to you. But before we get to Mike and his guests, let me ask you a question. How important are things to you? You've heard it said you can't take it with you. How true. You're no fool to give up what you cannot keep to gain what you cannot lose. To gain salvation is worth losing everything else. Think about it. Now, Mike, our host, president of Promise Christian University, is anxious for us to meet his guest. So, Mike, who is it? We're very glad to have our guests on the program today, and I want to thank all of you that view each week to these telecasts at Promise Christian Live TV here in Pasadena, and I know that through Internet it's seen all over the world. So each week, our hope and our prayer and our endeavor is that we'll bring you a wonderful broadcasting with great guests that will really encourage your heart as you view these programs. Our uh, desire is that from this studio, something that is said, something that will come forth from our guests or from myself will really be a blessing to your heart and make a real difference. We're delighted today, here today in studio, to have as a very special guest, Dr. And Mrs. Enrico Giorgio and his lovely wife Marie. Thank you, Marie. And we want to welcome you. you to the Keller cast today. Thank you. We've been wanting to have you on for some time now, and I want you to share a little bit with our audience today about your marvelous ministry and the work that you're doing in Los Angeles among the Ethiopian American community at the Ethiopian International Church and some of the other ministries you're involved in. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. McKinney. Uh, we're glad to be here, yes, Marie and I. <laughs> thank you. And we thank God for this opportunity. Uh, maybe I should just tell you a little bit about my background. Please do, yes. I came to the United States. I was born in Ethiopia. Uh, and I came to the United States as a high school student. I came as an exchange student. And I was asked the question, I just became a Christian in the 10th grade. So in the 12th grade is when I came here. They asked me, where would you like to live? And I didn't know much about the United States, but I knew about California. So right. I said, I want to go to California. And they said, what kind of family would you like to live with? My, my. And I said, I'm a Christian, so I want a Christian family. And what happened, uh, Dr. McKinney, was they put me with a Baptist minister. I see. So I had a wonderful high school experience. Through that, that was a providence of God. Uh, because I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot uh, before I came here uh, for God to lead me. And uh, through that, uh, living with that Christian family, Baptist family, I was able to get a scholarship to go to college in Riverside oh my. at California Baptist University. Excellent school. In those days, it was called California Baptist right. College. Right. So I ended up there. Uh, I, w I went to school there, graduated from there. And then mm -hmm. I was able to go to UCR for mm -hmm. my graduate study. Uh, and then my first job, uh, I studied education. Right. Became a teacher. My first job was in a Christian school. Oh, my. Where uh, Marie's sister was one of the teachers with me. Oh, I see. And uh, oh, her yeah. father was one of the supporters of the Christian school. Yes. And that's how I met Marie. <laughs> I didn't know Marie at first. The I, Lord I, had I this all worked father. out, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he knew exactly what to do. Yeah. Marie, you must have been excited to meet this wonderful young man from Ethiopia. Oh, it was intriguing to me. It, it was his faith, though, that really interested me. Yes. Because I, I tutored at the school. Actually, my younger brother and sister also attended the school, so it was a family affair. Wow. Yes. And I remember once I was in the school office when a child was brought in from the playground and he was bleeding oh. and brought into the principal's office so he could pray for him. You only find that in Christian schools, right? Right, right. that's <laughs> right. You're not gonna I was it. in the outer office yeah. and I, I heard him pray um, based on Ezekiel 16, 6 for the flow of blood to stop. And when the boy came out, I saw he was better. Mm. I saw a difference. Right. So I went home that night and I said to my mom, I said, I'm going to marry a man of faith just like that. My goodness. But a number of years went by, and when I re-encountered Enrico, he ended up to be the man of faith that, was the that one. I married. <laughs> yes. The Lord had a, had a wonderful plan and he purpose did. and objective sure for did. our life. 
Just wonderful. And so you got into education. The Lord at first led you into, into that area of, of, of work. Well, primarily, um, I come from a family of engineers. Yes. My grandfather was an engineer. My father was an engineer. My brothers are engineers. My goodness. When I ended up in college, I, I was taking courses in literature, in mm -hmm. English, and in writing. Yeah. And they all said, what's wrong with you? What, what happened? <laughs> Doing the liberal arts here. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I basically said, I, I, I like reading. Yeah. I like writing. Uh, so I just inclined that direction and ended up in education. Marvelous. Uh, education, uh, one of the things that I remember when I was a little boy, uh, my mother said, education is your key. Yes. And I believed it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, being a teacher, teaching for over 30 years now, when I say that to students today, I say education is your key. They don't believe me. They kind of look at me and yeah. go, oh, yeah, you think so? Because <laughs> I can be a rock star and make more money than any, any teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, they don't believe it. But in, in my day, mm -hmm. we believed it. Oh, yeah. So studying, making sure that you study, you get your education was a key. And that kind of took me to a, 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 an avenue where my parents and my background did not go. I see. At first, they were not very happy that I didn't become an engineer. Mm -hmm. But after a while, they saw that God was leading me, yeah. and they, 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 they were supportive. So I do love education, and I've stayed in it, what, uh, over 30, 30 years, years now. And you were vice principal at Ayala High School. That I is understand. correct. I was a teacher for many years. A very fine And school. I became a counselor. Uh, then I became an assistant principal. Uh, worked in that for many years mm -hmm. and retired from the public school. I was a... Uh, uh, assistant principal at Ayala High School with yes. uh, over 2,500 students. My, my. Very good school oh, with excellent. very high grades mm -hmm. and high academic standard. My goodness. Yeah. You've always must have been very proud of this guy, Sister Marie. You know? I have been. He, well, he's using his gift. Yes. Writing, it's a very education, brilliant person. that is his gift. I know that's that. His you gift. Know. Yeah. Yes. And, the, and what I love about him so much, how much he is in love with the Lord. I think that's so wonderful. And so besides education, what got you in? to become an ordained minister of the gospel. Well, once I got saved, you see, but when I got saved, and another little background, uh, my sister and I were very good friends growing up. But we had, uh, we would fight, we would bicker, you know, little mm -hmm. things about mm -hmm. brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And one, one time when I was in the 10th grade, uh, I would say, well, at, at that time, I would say one word, and she would literally say four, five, six words. She was oh. just verbally yeah. a lot more developed than I was mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to kind of make it a little right. normal. She was a great debater. She was a great debater. <laughs> but once she, bec and then she became a Christian. Mm -hmm. And then I would say something which normally would get her really excited and say many things. Yeah. She wouldn't say. So I said, what happened to you? What's wrong? And she said, I've become a Christian. So I said, well, what do you think? I am a Muslim. <laughs> I'm a Christian too. Yes. Uh, day after day, that attitude of hers, the change in her life was very evident to my me goodness. as something has happened to my sister. So I said, I want to go to church with you just to see what happened my. to you. You saw this tremendous transformation. Tremendous yeah. transformation wow. in her life. And so I was high school, 10th grade mm -hmm. student, so I went to church with her. And sure enough, I heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. Even though I had been brought up in a n nominal Christian school, right. uh, Christian home, mm -hmm. uh, Lutheran background. Yeah. My mother was a Lutheran, devoted, a devoted Lutheran. Very, She believed in God. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to church with her. But unfortunately, it didn't get into me at that I time. See. But when my sister got saved. She got saved in full gospel church, yeah. a church that was on fire, the mm, church that amen. preached uh, salvation, yeah. Yeah. A new birth, uh, spirit of God, mm -hmm. being involved with you. So her life really changed. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that change, I wanted to see what it was, what happened to my sister. I went to church to see what happened to her. My. And when I heard the gospel, it touched me. My goodness. But Dr. McKinney, there was a little bit of pride in me. I said, this is good for girls, oh, not for I guys. See, I see. <laughs> but the good thing about it, the grace of God, yeah. I kept going back to church. Right. 
about five months, I just kept going, kept going. One day, it dawned on me. I said, my gosh, I did not receive Jesus. So one day, the, the preacher gave an invitation for people mm. who wanted to give their lives to Jesus, and I stood up. Wow. After that, I wanted to make sure that I had it for sure. So I stood up for yeah. another four times. But to be absolutely four sure. Four Sundays. <laughs> I wanted to be absolutely <laughs> sure. You're a very saved person. <laughs> <laughs> I was. That was it. That Basically, that was over 40 years ago. My goodness. And um, I have never regretted that decision. Wonderful. My life changed. My direction changed. My attitude changed. Mm -hmm. My behavior changed. I really became a child of God. Marvelous. And that was the, the best thing that happened to me. Now, looking at ministry then, uh, what happened was we started a, a Bible study right there in the high school where I was. My goodness. And I was involved almost immediately with the other kids. We, we, had, uh, uh, we just read one scripture and we prayed. Lunchtime when people, when other students went to lunch and to play uh, soccer or, or what have you, right. we would go into a room, we, we had permission, to, to use one of the rooms, we would go in and read one scripture and pray. Mm. We would do that almost every day. And uh, when I ended up coming here yes. and staying with a Baptist family, very God-loving people, the opportunity was open for me to go to California Baptist College, which was a Christian school. Oh, yes. I continued with my Christian education but my degree actually is in, in English. I, I got see. a degree in English. I see. But I did take Bible classes. Oh, I yes. took Greek. I You're took very all well the things equipped. that I needed. <laughs> so basically I stayed with that. And then in, uh, somewhere in 1981, as far as I know, uh, a group of us Ethiopians got together and started the first Ethiopian Bible study anywhere outside in, in, of anywhere outside Ethiopia. Of the, of the country, right. Yes. And that eventually became a church. My goodness. Uh, that we started that in Downey many, many years ago, in 1981. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, as, uh, working as a teacher, I continued to minister uh, and, and be the leader there, uh, teaching Bible classes and, and preaching. Uh, at first, we, uh, a friend of mine and myself, were pastors. Then later on, we got a pastor that we could support. My. And so I've been involved with the Christian work all and the along. church all this time. My. And how did this beautiful church, I've been to your beautiful church in L.A., how did that get started? The Ethiopian, Agape Ethiopian International Church. Yes, Agape International Ethiopian Church started about two and a half to three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was once I retired from my day job, Yeah. Uh, the Lord began to lead us to, to do more, to be involved more directly in the ministry. I was going to say that I admire so much the fact that, that uh, Dr. Enrico had an opportunity, of course, to become a principal and someday a superintendent of schools and all, so many opportunities. And yet he was willing to put that aside because he felt uh, his calling now at this time in life was get, getting geared more to uh, ministry, ministry and Christian education. Is that right? Dr. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. So the church started out of that. Now, I love Christian education. Education is still my heartbeat. Oh, sure. Uh, one of the things that I, 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 I honestly believe is that we as Christians need to teach and educate the next generation. Right. The universities, the public universities, the secular universities are teaching the mind but not the spirit. Not the spirit. Right. So basically, the, the, the many students, even Christian students, are going to secular universities yes. and many a time, unfortunately, losing their faith losing the instead faith. of strengthening right. it. So I honestly believe and truly believe that Christian education should be supported and should be the wave of the future because we are responsible for these upcoming, the next generation. Yes. If, we, if Christian schools like uh, Promise Christian University if we don't do it, it won't get done. That's right. It won't get done. Right. People will have their minds trained, but their spirit will be empty. And you know, I'm so glad to hear you share that, your heart in, in Christian education, because Dr. Enrico recently has been appointed as Vice President and Provost of Promise Christian University, and we're just delighted to bring you on staff. 
And uh, we're just so thrilled, uh, Marie, about his uh, accepting. We're praying for God to bring someone uh, of his caliber mm -hmm. to, to, in that, to in that position. And God knew who to bring. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, you know, when we began the university uh, eight years ago, yeah. uh, the Lord told me that if we would obey his command to build him in this university, that he would send men and women to stand by our side to hold up our hands so that we wouldn't have to stand alone. Mm -hmm. And I took the Lord as his word. And I can honestly tell our people today, it's the story of promise is miraculous because he has brought, uh, the Lord promised that he would send them and, and they have come. And I'm so glad that you're one of them whom God has designated really like a destiny to mm -hmm. be with us. And we believe there's a divine purpose even greater than any of us fully understand or realize you're doing something there. I, I very much believe so because my one of the reasons, like you said, yeah. I could have stayed in public education. Absolutely. And uh, grow in my uh, position and, yes. and, my, and, and make a lot of money. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, very lucrative. But I took an early retirement. I'm, I'm, I'm young enough oh, yeah. to, to work for another 10 well, years. You're still a easily, young man. You know. <laughs> uh, in public education. Yeah. But I took an early retirement because of this purpose. Yeah. My life needs to count for God and what he wants to do. Amen. And if I can input some students, if I can input those students that will come to Promise Christian University, yes. if I can help to tell them, like my mother told me, right. education is the key. Because yeah. there are many ministers, unfortunately, they did not have formal education. Yes or may have had education many, many years ago and, and do yeah, not have the, the, the recent te right. techniques and, and educational I'd like to come programs. back and maybe get another degree or, Correct. Or, or, or resume where they had left off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they can do it by either coming to school yes. or they can do it online. They can do it through correspondence. They can do it in many ways. Sure. Today, it is you have no excuse. Nobody has an excuse <laughs> to say, I, I cannot go to school. Well, actually, you know, Dr. Enrique, uh, uh, that's kind of humorous in a way because our oldest graduate is 85 years old. Wonderful. So no one can say I'm too old to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Nobody can say I'm too old. <laughs> Nobody can say I don't have the opportunity. Right. That's right. If they want, they can learn. Yes. And that's where... I think Pr Promise Christian University comes yeah. in. Mm -hmm. It is a, it's a position, it's a, it's a school that can equip the saints. We are told to equip the saints. Amen. Study to show thyself approved, Amen. a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. How can you do that unless you learn? Can't yes. do it. <laughs> yes, and so. you know, that's marvelous. And also, besides being vice president of the university, you're also doing a great work in being the head of our uh, online department. And now we're hearing from many countries of the world, students potentially that want to get online and do our program, get their degree from Promise. And there's just so many countries in Southeast Asia and some of the African nations that we're hearing are very interested in, in our university and what we're doing here in Pasadena. So I'm, I'm, so, I'm so delighted that that you're here. What do you see is the wave of the near future in the Lord in Christian education, and especially for our pastors that are viewing out there today this telecast? What would you, how do you feel the direction the Lord is taking for Christian education in our nation and our world in these last days? This is an opportunity for us. I, I believe as the time gets closer for the church to do her work, which is, I believe in revival. Right. I believe in great revival coming. And that revival comes through some people getting somewhere where they can get the Word of God into them. That's right. Online education for international students is one great way. They don't have to come all the way here. Right. They can do it from their home. They can do it from in Indonesia or Africa or, or Russia. They can right. do it from anywhere. That is the wave of the future. If they want to learn, if they want, if they have a desire to learn, yes. the opportunity is there. That's marvelous. So it all a has It's within desire. Yes. And uh, and uh, wh what do you where do you see uh, in the near future the involvement of promise 
uh, in these other nations besides uh, the United States? Where, where do you feel that, that the Lord is bringing this, our school, the direction that he's giving? Well, I believe, first of all, we need to get the information out. That's right. And people need to know that we are here. Amen. Once they know that we are here, then they, they need to contact us. We've got the goods, they need the goods, need the goods. so we need to make sure that there's a connection, communication between the two. Uh, the, the, the other one is that really the churches need to be motivated. That's right. Churches are, are the, 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 the light of the world. That's the right. The salt of the earth. Yes. And that salt needs to be able to say, you know, to preserve and, and to do the things that it needs to do. The light needs to shine. So that's what I believe we're at. That's I'm smart. writing uh, many things, including books and yes, pamphlets. I would like you to mention to our viewing yeah. audience today a little bit about some of the books. Dr. Enrico is a very, very prolific person and a wonderful author of several uh, Christian books. And I'd like you to share with our audience today a little bit about some of the books that you've written, as even your latest book that's now in, uh, being published. Would you tell us about that? The latest, the, the <coughs> most recent, the newest book we have is known as the body of Christ unleashed. Oh my. And it talks about three things, three simple okay. things. One, it talks about the love of God. God loves you. Amen. That's the message. That's a big message. God made you with special DNA, with special fingerprint, because He loves you. He has a special purpose for your Amen. life. Amen. Second one is you are not what people say you are. You are not what you think you are. <laughs> you are what God says you yeah, are. That's right. That's identity. Second one is identity. So once you know God loves you, second one, once you know your identity, the third one is what did Jesus come to do? There's one thing Jesus came to do. Yes, he came to, to <laughs> preach the gospel, Amen. to save people. Yeah. But he really came to show the love of God, to express the love of God to the world. Yeah, right. And our number one job as the body of Christ, if you ask me, what is your number one work in this world? It is to express the love of God to the world. And the book is all about that. That's beautiful. Simple, very simple book, but very powerful book. Right. You can get it uh, through Amazon.com. It, yes. is, it is called The Body of Christ Unleashed. It's releasing the body Great. so that they can release, express the love of God to the world. What a message. I think the body of Christ needs to hear that message. They need your book. Yes. So they can get it through Amazon. Is that yes, right? Yes, they can. Oh, very, very good. And I hope you folks will, that are tuned in today will take advantage of that and get uh, some of Dr. Rico's books. What, were, what was the other, the, uh, one of the other books that you wrote recently? The other book, there's a, a, a book that is before that, yeah. we, which is uh, called The Body of Christ. Okay. That one is for a new believer, oh, a new Christian. Very practical. And a very book. practical book. Mm -hmm. There's another one called Enlarge Your Tent. Wow. That is for the Christian, for the believer. How to believe God to expand us, yes. to do what we are supposed to do in this world. Mm. to develop our spirit so that we can do what God said we can do. I, 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 I think you agree with me I do. that all Christians, if we could do what God said we can do, we will be giants in this world. That's right. We will, we will take over. We will not be taken over. We will take, we'll take over. over. And that's what the book is about. Oh, I think that's marvelous. And you know, that's kind of the essence of Promise Christian University, too, because we want to reach people and prepare them for the marketplace, as well as behind the pulpit, yes. that in every aspect of life, every profession, every area, they'll be fully equipped and thoroughly furnished. I think it's just fantastic, uh, the great work that you, you folks are doing in L.A. and at Promise Christian University. Yes. And we wish you so well. Our prayers are with you, and Thank I know you. that... I believe the great things are ahead. I'm sure some more books are coming. To <laughs> the next one would be God willing on the blood of Jesus. Oh my goodness. The well, blood covenant. We'll have to get that one too. Right. And I know that it's going to be great. And uh, we appreciate so much you folks being with us today on Thank the you. program. And I, I think it's just marvelous. And you're both the team. Like Adele and I see you guys working together in such a marvelous way. And it's just great. And you know, we appreciate you so very, very much. Thank you. We appreciate being here. We appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate you. And we do believe in what uh, Promise Christian is doing. Thank you. Uh, I believe God has great things in store for us. Thank you. And I think many churches and many individuals can directly benefit 
from what is being done through Promise Christian University. Praise the Lord. Right. Thank you yes. so much. Thank I appreciate you. you folks being on the air today. I'd just like to tell our viewing audience just for a moment that uh, as you heard Dr. Enrico say today, and if you're looking for a Christian college university, uh, check, check on Promise Christian University. We have so many wonderful professors and we're getting ready for graduation coming up pretty soon one of these days. And we're looking forward to all that God is doing. So I want to thank you again for viewing. Dudley, again, it's wonderful today, this program. Praise the Lord. Uh, great, Mike. Today's interview was all that I expected it to be. Were you blessed by it? Good. When you hear someone talk about what you cannot lose, somehow things become less important in your life. It makes living a lot easier, don't you think? Next week, we'll be on the air with another inspirational program. And until then, keep the faith. And call us if you like. Phone 1-888-723-6233 or email us at mypcu uh, at aol.com. And as my wife says, blessings to you today and every day. Thank mm -hmm. you.